Big problem for Muslims. We're very nice to the secretary at work and to the boss. When we come to the masjid, we come with a frown. There's a problem. That brother, yeah, he's nice, may Allah forgive him. And you start with all the flaws he has. We're not forgiving of people, we're very cutthroat when it comes to each other. We have to learn to be different. And in this regard, I share with you just one reminder that I shared with a few students last night. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, probably few of us, there, there can't be any comparison between the love he has for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and anybody else. His love for the Messenger surpasses anybody else's. Radiallahu anhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On top of this, his daughter is married to the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa So not only does he love him because he is the Messenger of Allah, he loves him because he's family. His daughter is accused. In Surah Nur we find the incident, his daughter is accused. And his daughter is accused by someone who he used to give some allowance to. Now those of you that have daughters, imagine your daughter is accused in an ugly way, like our mother was accused, Ummul Mu'mineen. Just imagine the rage you would feel, the anger you would have. And on top of this ad that this is not just anybody's daughter, this is not just any woman, this is the mother of the believers. So accusing her is an attack not just on her, but on her husband and on the deen of Islam. It's an attack on the dignity of Islam altogether. This incredible violation, this enormous, enormous, you know, attack. And here we find Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, as how big this man's heart is, he exacts his anger by discontinuing the allowance. That's all he does. He discontinues giving allowance. And Allah Azza wa Jal set such a high standard, move up inshaAllah ta'ala as much as you can. Allah sets such a high standard for him. He tells him, He gives him advice in the Quran. Then he should forgive out of love. They should forgive out of love. They should turn the page. Wouldn't you love that Allah would forgive you? Now listen to this carefully. On the one hand, imagine this scale, okay? There's a scale. On the one hand, there's the anger of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu against this man. It's fair. He, sh- he deserves to be you know, punished. But on the other hand, Allah gives him, either your anger weighs more, or your love of being forgiven by Allah weighs, weighs more. I'll give you the choice. So when you get, the next time you get upset, you and I get upset, remind ourselves, is the offense that, you, that has made you upset, does it compare to the anger and the situation of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Does it compare? And does it compare that if you forgive out of love of Allah, and out of, in a loving fashion, if you forgive, then what Allah is offering you is your forgiveness. Is your anger and your revenge worth more? Or is the forgiveness of Allah that He's offering you worth more? What is worth more to you? You will forget about whether the person deserves it or not, whether they're a nice guy or not, whether they even acknowledge they did something wrong or not. You don't care. All you care about is Allah is offering you your forgiveness. أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ So this is the next attribute. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ But the one I want to conclude with, and I only have a couple of minutes to do so, is something very peculiar. You would think I'm going to keep going on with a list of good deeds. Good things that these muttaqeen do. The next ayah is about bad deeds. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Those who did something lewd, shameless, vulgar, Whenever they committed an act that was shame and vulgar, in any way, shape or form, fahishatan, not al-fahisha, but fahishatan, any act of shamelessness, whether it was stealing something with the eyes, they gazed at something they shouldn't have, ya'lamu kha'inat al-a'yun, he knows the stealing of your gazes, he knows that too, وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورُ What the chests are hiding, whether it was a billboard, whether it was a banner, whether it was some Facebook friend you made, whether it was some texting you were doing in the middle of the night, whether it was some inappropriate interaction, whatever it was, whatever shameless thing you did, these people, the muttaqeen are being described that they may fall into this trap too. They're not immune, they're human beings. It might happen. And wallahi, it's so much easier to understand now than it was ever before. You can't take a trip, you can't get in your car unless, unless you're exposed to fahsha hundreds of times before you get to work. We're bombarded with it. So we're guilty of this. 
Whether we like it or not, we're breathing it in. The, fa- the culture of fahsha, we're breathing it in. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Or they wronged themselves in any other way. They didn't wake up for the prayer. They didn't give their zakat. They didn't, you know, give sadaqah. They weren't, they didn't keep family ties. They wronged themselves in any other way. Allah is describing the muttaqeen like this. Why? Because they will make mistakes. But then there's something they do after the mistake. And this is the point I want to make and I'm done inshaAllah ta'ala. He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ They remembered Allah. I want to tell you about a trick of shaitan. When you go late to work, and your boss is angry at you because you're late, and lots of people work at your office, you know what you do? You avoid eye contact and sneak into your cubicle. You don't want to, sit, you don't want to face him. When you, when you have a bad report card, and you go home to your family, you're in 6th, 7th grade, you got a bad report card, you sneak into the house, there's no, Asalaamu Alaikum, I'm home. You sneak in and you kind of go and you pass out, you go to sleep. <laughs> right, what happened in school? Nothing. When you disappoint someone, you avoid contact with them. You avoid, that's natural. In this case, when we do something shameless, when we wrong ourselves, who have we disappointed? Allah Azza wa Jal. We've disappointed Allah. So naturally, shaitan takes advantage of this. He comes to you and me and he says, you're gonna go pray now, you hypocrite. You do this shameless thing. You do this and that, and now you wanna go attend a class? Now you wanna go do, you know, ibadah? You should be, you don't, you 